हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल और वेलकम टू माई चैनल दिस इज योर फर्स्ट टाइम टूडेज लेक्चर इज गोइंग टू बी अबाउट द सिमुलेशन ऑफ अ बैच रिएक्टर एंड आई विल बी डेमोन्स्ट्रेटिंग द सिमुलेशन इन पाइथन बट बिफोर स्टार्टिंग ऑफ विद द सिमुलेशन आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट बैच रिएक्टर्स इन जनरल एंड इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट so batch reactors simply if you uh, visualize it it is basically a container or a vessel which will hold all our reactants and products while the reaction takes place okay so initially there is uh, reactants only but after a while when the reaction progresses to a you know a certain limit then there will be products and these are mainly used for small scale operation or if you are uh, willing to you know produce uh, some very expensive chemicals or uh, very sensitive chemicals then these are used uh, largely you will see batch reactors are found in pharmaceutical industries or specialty chemical industries now the biggest advantage of batch reactors is that high conversion can be achieved if you use a batch reactor and um, sometimes what happens is uh, the operators will leave the uh, reactant mixture uh, as it is and that will actually uh, lead to higher conversions even if the reaction is uh, practically over and one uh, big disadvantage is that you know batch reactions uh, they will give you a lot of variability in the product i mean with different batches the product may actually be variable so this uh, is one of the gray side of uh, using batch reactors but it is a very important part it's a uh, it's a very important thing to learn before you come to know about how continuous uh, reactors or flow reactors work so on your right hand side what you can see is basically a vessel which has a stirrer in it and uh, this is uh, the general representation of a batch reactor schematic now uh, the equation that i have uh, written over here this is uh, basically the molar representation or the differential equation which talks about the change in moles of the reactant a okay and na is the mo uh, number of moles of a T is the time, R A is the reaction rate, and V is the volume of the batch, volume of the batch mixture. Now, one thing to remember in batch reactors, there is no inflow or outflow from the reactor vessel. Basically, what it means is, once you have put in the reactants, after your reaction is over, you will be taking out your products. So there will be no intervention in between. now the most important equation for batch reactors is the general mole balance equation uh, if you consider a species j then d n j dt that is the change in number of moles of j with respect to time is given as the integral of rj into dv uh, over the entire volume now if you consider that the batch reactor is perfectly mixed then you can take this rj term out of the integral and you will get this equation so this is the general important things that you need to know about a batch reactor before you start simulating one now uh, for this demonstration uh, i have selected a second order reaction uh that takes place in a batch reactor the reaction is pretty simple a plus b gives c and these are the rate equations so what uh this a within square brackets b and c within square brackets represent is the concentration of the species a b and c now since i have written concentrations it simply means uh, it will simply mean moles per volume so these are the rate equations and this k is the rate constant and t is the time 
now i will move into uh, the python interface so that we can start coding these are basically our uh, equations or model equations which we are going to simulate so i am working on a spider interface if you want you can use jupyter notebook you can use google collab as per your choice but i have a spider from python 3.11 and uh, all those of you who are familiar with python you all know that uh, when we are working with uh, differential equations like we will be in this case we need to import some libraries mm, i have already written the code um, i'm just waiting to run it uh, so i'll go through each line uh, and explain what is to be done basically so first three lines that you can see uh, basically i have imported the libraries numpy matplotlib and from scipy library i have imported the integrate now here uh, i require od int for uh, my integration purpose for the solution of differential equations and from matplotlib i will be using the plot functions and from numpy i will be using the general algebraic functions now our next step is to determine the simulation parameters so t start is basically the starting time i have commented each line so that uh, you can understand pretty well even if i do not explain uh, so t start is the starting time zero and t end is the end time here i have taken the end time to be 100 now it may be minutes it may be seconds it may be hours uh, we are not going into that debate we'll just keep it as units of time now the initial concentration of a is taken as one and that is in moles per volume uh, the initial concentration of b is given as 0 0.5 and the initial concentration of c is taken as zero since c is the product so initially we assume that only a and b are present in the reactor they will react and then they will eventually start forming c the rate constant that is k value is 0 0.05 now for a second order reaction the units of rate constant will be volume per moles into time now we will define the actual system of equations so for the definition of these equations we are going to write the def or the function structure this lines 14 to 19 so here i have named this uh, function as reaction ods and y and t are the state and time variable so by state variables i simply mean the concentrations of a b and c now i simply write the equations d a d t as minus rate constant into a into b db dt as minus rate constant into a into b and dc dt as a rate constant into a into b which were precisely our simulation equations and it is supposed to written uh, return da dt db dt and dc dt now uh, we will set up the initial conditions vector so when uh, we are going to call these functions the system of differential equations uh, for solution using od int later we will need to supply it with some initial conditions so this initial condition is given as a vector initial concentration of a initial concentration of b and initial concentration of c also we need to specify the time points for simulation so we know the starting time and end time now we have to tell the solver that okay between this start time and end time you have to check this da dt db dt and dc dt in this few intervals so for that purpose i have taken a maximum interval of 500 so basically t will form a vector which is linearly spaced with 500 points between t start and t end i hope that's clear 
uh, then we will actually initiate the solution procedure that is we will call the od int that we imported from the scipy library so in od int we will give in the arguments the first argument is the function which contains all our differential equations we have already defined it before in line 14 so reaction ods then we have to give in the initial condition so which again we have uh, defined in line 22 as a vector and the time points that will be used for simulation now once uh, line 28 is executed we will obtain the solutions for concentrations of a b and c in this concentration variable and if we want to extract each of the species concentration at the different timestamps then we will use this operations these are basically array operations so from the concentrations array we are extracting the arrays for individual species and then we will finally be plotting with respect to time we will plot each of these concentrations with respect to time and we will provide a legend and uh, then we will simply visualize the entire reaction so now let us go ahead and run this so on running what happens is uh, the variable explorer that you see on your right hand side will uh, generate all the points or all the variables that have occurred first i'll show you the variable explorer so you can see concentration of a b c concentrations everything that you have defined the user defined ones as well as the solved ones are all stored in the variable explorer in the plots you can now see that we have obtained the batch reactor simulation for the second order reaction of our case you see the concentration of a decreases from 1.0 it will decrease to almost a little below 0.6 the concentration of b also decreases point uh, from 0.5 to uh, almost zero and the concentration of c increases from zero to nearly 0.5 so as it was expected with uh, progress of the reaction the concentrations of a and b reduce and the concentration of c or the product increases so basically it means a and b are getting consumed and c is produced so this is how you would simulate a, a batch reactor problem uh, of course, this problem is a very simple one. Uh, there is not much uh, complexity, chemical engineering complexities involved. But still, it gives a good understanding on how to solve differential equations and how to simulate the batch reactor and interpret the results that you obtain with the help of the plots. So, this is it. Thank you. Until next time.